Welcome to Talk World Radio, a half-hour discussion of politics as if the people mattered. I'm David Swanson. This week on Talk World Radio, we are talking about efforts in Canada in a labor union to divest from the Israeli war machine as part of anti-war efforts uh, in Canada and around the world. We're looking at a, at an interesting campaign with our guest, Dave Salasi, who is uh, he who has worked as director of the Office of Social Justice in Victoria, British Columbia, high school teacher and president of the Toronto secondary unit of his union. He served three terms as Ward 3 counselor in Georgina retired he still is engaged with union work and acts as a professional parliamentarian for union locals and the chamber of commerce along with political involvement dave serves as executive of a retired teachers organization and catholics for justice and peace in the holy land most recently he has been host of a bi-weekly public affairs show on rogers tv politically speaking insights and issues Dave Salasi, welcome to Talk World Radio. Well, thank you very much for welcoming me, and very good to uh, meet you, David. So, I will correct a little bit. I'm sure we're going to get into this, but uh, it's not a union action per se. It's a it's the pension plan from a number of of uh, teachers unions that's uh, pooled together and invested on behalf of all the members of that plan. So, but we you're going to ask more detail about that. Well, why don't you start with some? What what are those unions? Okay, so like how it works within Ontario is the um, the four main the four teachers unions, which would be the Ontario Secondary School Teachers, the Elementary Teachers of Ontario, the uh, French Teachers Union, and the Catholic Teachers Union. Uh, the members contribute jointly to a plan that's jointly managed with the participation of the provincial government as well to manage this plan uh, on behalf of all the retirees, the members and contributors future. So it's not a single union that's in charge of these investment uh, uh, portfolio and the retirement plan. And who has control over what the money is invested in? Is there any history or precedent of the people whose money it is having any say? Are there any ethical standards or has there been divestment from anything? Uh, or or who, who decides where the money goes? We slow down. There's a whole mess of questions there that we have to break down then. Uh, the plan is managed by an investment team, a management team that's hired by the plan overseers. As I said, the, um, the member affiliates, union affiliates who comprise the Ontario Teachers Federation, they have a representation on the board um, as well as the provincial government has representation on that board. But the plan is managed on a day-to-day -day and annual basis by the team which they hire the investment team, the uh, management team, et cetera. They look after the plan. They always declare that their primary responsibility is the fiduciary responsibility to the plan members to produce a profit in their investments in order to make the plan sustainable to guarantee the in, in uh, it's a defined benefit pension plan. Um, so a in order profit to profit or the maximum possible profit. Um, well, in order to, you you have a, an obligation, a fiduciary obligation of what you're going to be paying out to current and future retirees. So they have a fiduciary responsibility, they claim under the law, to make the best return for those beneficiaries. Yeah plan as can be made and that that is their guiding principle um union members can try to affect what that policy means through their elected representatives 
to the Ontario Teachers Federation board and the ones who sit there, people who sit on the board appointing the managers and uh, team investors. Um, and has been successful. I will say that over the years, with pressure from, uh, from rank and file members and rank and file retirees who are beneficiaries of the plan, there has been some significant um, movement in terms of establishing parameters for investment, such as um, bringing down any carbon footprint um, uh, impacts of investment. In the, the um, oh dear, uh, there's a, a term for the, the package of principles under which the investments are to operate. We find, however, that that is being interpreted very, very, very narrowly and always subject to the overriding um, commitment to fiduciary responsibility. So yes, yes, there is there is there is um, acknowledgement given to the fact that real fiduciary responsibilities mean so we're trying to improve the quality of life for our members and future generations. How do we protect them in the process? And the attempt to minimize, I'm saying minimize, attempt to minimize investments in environmentally damaging. Uh, uh, corporations has been uh, given attention by the plan managers. Yeah, there still is a lot of criticism and how far the gap is between. I mean, went right off the screen there, didn't I? Uh, how far the gap is between uh, stated objectives and actual performance uh, activities. So. Um, has so th that movement though to acknowledge that their responsibilities extend beyond simply maximizing profits has been acknowledged by plan managers. In fact, in the past, a number of years ago, uh, through heavy lobbying and representation to the plan, they finally divested from all tobacco products as a as a principle. So the board has the power within its scope to determine what socially responsible investing actually means in the long run. So that's wonderful that there's that there are precedents, uh, that they have done this before. Um, it, it seems to me a difficult moment in that three years ago, you could go to such an institution and say, here is evidence that you could have made even more money by investing in things other than weapons. I don't think you could do that today. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't think there is anything more profitable than weapons today. You know, I, I, I myself am not an investment uh, advisor, manager on top of it. Um, but I, I still cannot believe that in our broad scope of, of human activity, that that there aren't investments that can accomplish both things, make uh, a significant return on investment, yet be socially responsible in ensuring that you're not trampling on workers' rights or feeding into the war machine to destroy people and people's lives. And what we see happening in some of these, uh, you're right, you're right. These are incredibly successful companies generating an incredibly successful profit. In fact, the CEO of Raytheon, well, formerly called Raytheon, now referred to as RTX, one of the, I think it's the second largest weapons manufacturer um, in the, operating in the United States. The CEO, after the events of October 7 in, uh, in Israel, Palestine, made a statement along the lines that this is going to be great opportunities for expansion and profits. I, I'm, I'm, miss, I'm not, I'm paraphrasing him there. I, I don't have the quote in front of me, but uh, there's an admission that it's seen somehow as a, as a public virtue to be able to use 
uh, public invest, publicly invested money generate profits on death, on destruction, on violence against innocent civilians and innocent populations. I mean, what was the, the news report most recently? Uh, 34,000 people murdered in Gaza as a consequence of the actions of the Israeli armed forces. In, the, in this current time, the majority being women and children, uh, you know, non-combatants. Clearly, this is not a this is not a this is not a war. As as, as many people, the UN Rapporteur re reported, this is a, this is a massacre. This is a slaughter. This is uh, beyond. It's unconscionable what's going on there. And yet we have corporations viewing it as opportunity. Opportunity. I hate, to be, I hate to be the bearer of horrible news on top of what is maybe the most horrible news that anyone thinks they've heard in a while, but we haven't seen any wars that weren't massacres. We haven't seen any wars uh, in a century that didn't massacre huge numbers of men, women, and children, most of them more than this war yet, although I think those numbers from Hamas are low. Um, it's a war. It's also a genocide. It's also a massacre. It's also a slaughter. It's important legally that it's a war. Uh, but, but how did this campaign come into being, and and what are you asking divestment from uh, exactly? So there are large indexes of investment holdings that the fund will invest in, and these index holdings. Um, include a number of different um, corporations and uh, oper operations, so sometimes straight holdings, the index funds. The, when we looked at it in last September's uh, CEC filing, there were two uh, arms manufacturers that were included in the, uh, the listing, in the index, L3 Harris and Northrop Grumman. They were two companies in which the fund was invested in. We began to raise, pay attention at that point in time. In the most recent filing, we see that those corporate, after being drawn to attention, we see that those two particular um, arms manufacturers have been dropped from the index, from the, from the uh, in investment portfolio. But I mean, it was good. Celebrate that. This is wonderful. Yeah. But, but now it appears that, that RTX, as I said, formerly Raytheon, and Textron, another US-based military contractor uh, that's using a, producing a lot of the airplanes used for the surface-to-air missiles in Gaza, now the fund, the pension plan, Ontario Teachers Pension Plan, seems to be invested in those two arms manufacturers. So what we were asking for and attended uh, a group of us had gotten together, concerned people, but not an organized group. It was just uh, concerned current contributors to the plan and people who are retired, like myself, benefiting from the plan, saying, I don't want my money made by investment in these corporations. Are you indeed still invested in these arms manufacturers? Yeah. We couldn't get an answer. We couldn't get a clear answer. I mean, the first question that was when we went to the questions on the floor, and I asked the first question to the the uh, CEO of the pension plan, and it was a fairly gentle lob. You know, please explain. Are, uh, do we have a liability because the arms manufacturers supplying these weapons could be subject to international uh, legal sanctions um, as a consequence? Of, of their production of, uh, of these goods and sale for it, a sale of it to the uh, belligerent party uh, under Canada's own Crimes Against Humanity and War Crimes Act. Could our pension plan be subject to legal uh, penalties as participating? He just didn't answer. He didn't answer the question. Per person after person got up and asked the same question. Or similar questions. Well, but please be clear: Are we invested 
in these two companies. Yeah. And the CEO didn't answer. I mean, he could have brought down the tension and anxiety and anger building in the room very much simply by answering the question. And I, I have to look at him and say, are, are you being particularly dismissive of these concerns? Or do you not know? If you don't know, please check and get back to us. But at the same time, why can we not put a screen on all military investment, which is what the mem plan members are asking for? We don't want to have to play this game every three months to check the SEC index to see what arms manufacturers are on it this month and how much are we invested in those particular indices. You know, yeah. Let's put a screen on the total investment as we did in the case of tobacco years ago, that we would not invest in any tobacco uh, generating uh, tobacco manufacturers. In, in some cases, these weapons divestment campaigns have given the, the investing institution uh, a list of the top 20 or top 100 weapons manufacturers, a list that's updated annually. Um, because they say, where does it stop? Because in the United States, where I live, almost every company you could you could throw a rock and hit is a subcontractor of a subcontractor of the military. Like there's nobody that's out of the military. So we have to like define it as here are the top 100 weapons companies. Don't invest in any of them. Has has it gotten to the point of of having to do that um have they raised that objection how do we know what's a military company and what isn't well yeah yes that, that, that point actually was raised i will acknowledge that the chair uh the chair of the board who was running the meeting did make that uh general statements so we don't we don't know everyone that's uh involved in any military activities could uh, one of the companies providing tires, are those tires being used on military Jeeps? You know, right. that's not what we're asking. What we're asking for, as you pointed out, the major arms manufacturers who are responsible for producing the most heinous weapons for slaughtering individuals. And with that, I mean, the kind of uh, scale that you've produced, if we would even acknowledge that there are certain key manufacturers with which we will not do business, in whom we will not invest, uh, if we identify those, that sends a signal to the corporate market that's saying, you know what, uh, conversion to socially responsible use uh, it might be a more sound fiduciary action at this point in time for our company yeah if we're going to lose investments the, um sorry Go ahead. no dave Selassie, the the teachers who are not retired who are working on this campaign are their jobs secure are their careers safe are they risking anything by doing this well this the the, the strategy in this particular campaign is with the pension board and to put putting pressure on the teachers representatives from the constituent teachers unions uh, to push at the board for a more stringent screening. It's not uh, a complaint against an employer per se. That being said, uh, we do know of so many situations I know in where you are right now, a lot of academics, a lot of teachers are taking a lot more direct pressure and a lot of um, at attacks, uh, psychological, uh, verbal attacks for speaking up on behalf of human rights of the people of Palestine. Uh, and we know that that uh, same kinds of pressures are people here are subject to those same kind of pressures. So whether it's whether it's a uh, explicit um, risk to their well to their uh, livelihood or implicit and a stress factor, it still is a, a reason for people to keep themselves protected at this point in time. Yeah. 
the our... wars, the violence is being brought to our communities by the global attitude of the oppressor. How uh, how can people assist or help if they if they think this is a, a great cause? Is is there a, a way for people to get involved? Um, and lend their support or express their support for for this divestment campaign i think everybody you know works where they are planted that's a, going back to a, a an old adage from years ago um but i mean especially people who are actively uh teaching actively contributing to the plan people who are participants in the plan by receiving can maintain their letters in communication with the plan investors, the plan directors, saying, we, the owners of this plan, don't want investments in agents of death in the military complex. We want you to impose a screening mechanism to filter out the worst offenders of production of, of weapons. Um, member people who are actively teaching, members of unions, can certainly put the pressure, attending their own general meetings, putting pressure on their representatives to the board, to the Ontario Teachers Federation, saying that we want you to press at the board level for effective screening methods. Uh, and as I, I've repeated a number of times, it's not the first time we've asked for this. It's not the first time it's been done. It seems to be, as you pointed out earlier, a lot more resistance to screening out military in investments because of the lucrative nature of the, that industry yeah. and with the investment our, our our nations are putting into arms productions it's not an investment that seems to be at risk at any time in the near future well i hope we can make it at risk and i hope that these divestment campaigns can be a part of making it less profitable um have you I, I know that students are pushing universities to divest from weapons and from fossil fuels and other things. Have you heard from other other unions or other communities uh, since you've been working on this that are that are interested in pursuing the same path? Oh, well, I mean, a, a lot of the uh, labor movement has been actively working towards disarmament issues and uh, peace. Yes, specifically in uh, Israel-Palestine, but also in a more global perspective. The Ontario Federation of Labour, which is the governing body for all the unions operating uh, within the province, has made many statements and emphasized them again very recently, most recently, calling for uh, a halt to arms production, calling for a halt to arms shipments uh, to Israel, calling for a diversion into, into socially useful production as, as a way from a military-based uh, economy. Um, and other unions have been very, very vocal, specifically the Canadian Union of Public Employees, for example, is another union that's been uh, much at the forefront and leadership in these kind of campaigns. So yes, I mean, this is not a, uh, our action with our pension plan I think is is one part of what is becoming a rising consciousness, especially among working people, especially among uh, organized labor. And as I've said to uh, people who asked me, well, why did you go down and do that? You know, why were you why were you there and making making this ruckus? You know, um, and I say it became a ruckus because the plan administrators refused to take the concern seriously. So the Questions got more and more heated, more and more loud, until we find we a group of people went to the front and unfurled a banner demanding divestment now. You know, and there was a point I was about to make before that. <laughs> we Sorry. we have about three minutes left, Dave Salasi, for you to make uh, points, but we will have links up to it, to all the information you've got uh, on the website at Talk World Radio. Dot org uh, and anything else you can send me or share with me. Um, but uh, I, I, there was also a question I was going to ask. Um, 
what uh what's the next step is there another meeting is there i mean how how long do you envision this campaign taking so the point i was going to make simply was we went down there like like why well it may have advanced the cause this far but that's this much farther than it was yesterday you know so with all of these actions going on uh, with different labor unions, with different labor organizations, with different individual workers, the teachers around, it pushes more and more. Um, we certainly don't intend to stop calling on our pension plan to divest completely from military production. That is going on. We will, the individuals who gathered together and coalesced around this issue, we do plan to meet again and to see what the next step is. How do we move this further? So the next step is another half inch so now it's a full inch ahead and i know it's slow but organizing is at the grassroots takes time and you move bit by bit and as we saw with with the moving the plan to adopt a socially responsible investment policy it does come when when it's not when it's not just a scattered voice but those scattered voices coalescing together that's a movement that affects change. And that's what we're looking toward for. It will, we will get the plan to divest. It will happen. I'm very glad to hear it. We will shout it from the rooftops when it happens and hope it inspires other pension plans and other institutions to divest from the tools of mass murder. Uh, Dave Selassie uh, is working on the divestment campaign for the pension plan in Ontario of teachers and retired teachers in Ontario. Dave Selassie, thank you very, very much for coming on Talk World Radio. Well, thank you very much, David. It was very good to meet you and be on the, your show. We'll hopefully see you again. I hope so. This is Talk World Radio. I'm David Swanson. Take action at rootsaction.org. Help end war at worldbeyondwar.org. Read or listen to today's Peace Almanac entry at peacealmanac.org. All past shows can be heard at talkworldradio.org. Talk World Radio is produced in Charlottesville, Virginia, and syndicated by Pacifica Network. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way.